Come on in. Hallelujah. Church of Scope in Christ. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Come on in. I got a quick word. Something that's really been heavy on me. It's really, really, really. What that mean? Hit them hearts. Let's go. Those of you that know how to share me, share me. Come on, let's identify ourselves. I'm not going to be long. Let's get up to a thousand and then we're going to start this thing. Come on, if you know how to share me, go ahead and share me. What's happening, everybody? What's happening? Dina, what's happening? There you go. There you go. Share me. What's happening? What's happening, everybody? For anybody that's tuning in, we don't cuss on this Periscope and we don't do no Arabic talking. Hallelujah. Albany, Georgia. Come on in. If you know how to share me, guys, go ahead and share me. I got a quick word, something that's really been on me heavy. And I'm going to give you guys this because I have Bible study tonight. And if you're in um, Detroit, I'll be preaching for Bishop Murphy tomorrow at his prayer conference. And then I'll be in Atlanta, back at my church on Thursday, and then in Atlanta on Friday. Come on in. If you know how to share me, go ahead and share me. I'll be in Atlanta on Friday for, pa for Bishop uh, William Murphy. So I'm preaching for the Father on that uh, Wednesday and then the Son on that um, Friday. Come on in. There you go. Come on. We're almost there. We're almost at a thousand. And um, I just want to give you this quick thing. And for somebody that's tuned in, this is for you or this is for somebody. Which, which William Murphy are you preaching for? Which Murphy? On Friday, um, the father is in Detroit. I'm sorry. On Wednesday, the father is in Detroit. And then on Friday, the son is in Atlanta. All right. Bishop William Murphy is Saturday. All right. So let's go. So this one is entitled J.J. Harrison. You know I love you, man. <laughs> For those in Atlanta, it's the dreams of the church. All right, let's go. All right, so let's go here. Um, how many of how many of you all have ever felt the rush to do something um, that you feel like I got to make a decision right now? I got to do it right now, especially when your back is against the wall. And for someone, um, you are feeling the pressure that you need to. Um, Get out to flesh about this blazer. Um, that you need to make a rush decision. Uh, or someone you know is about to make a rush decision. So the Lord had me to come on here. And when you get a chance, I want you to read 1 Samuel, the 13th chapter. The 13th chapter. And the Bible says that Saul now is king. And the Philistines, his enemies, have risen up against him. And if you read it, in verse 6, it says, he saw that the situation was critical. And for somebody, your situation is very critical. And it says that their army was hard-pressed. You could feel the pressure of your situation right now. Um, and there's nothing like pressure. And the Bible says they hid in caves and thickets and among the rocks and pits and cisterns. So now um, the children of Israel are hiding because their enemies uh, it, it, this is a critical situation and for somebody you feel the pressure and your support group is not there for you. Please listen to this. Uh, while Saul remained in Gilgal, the Bible says that his troops that are around him, so you have some people that have left you, but then his troops that are around him, the Bible says that they were fearful and after waiting seven days, I'm almost there guys, come on, keep, keep, keep your attention on point. Saul waited seven days, the time that, that uh, the time set by Samuel, and he got nervous, and now his men are scattering, and for somebody, you feel like you're literally dealing with this critical situation or this pressure situation by yourself, and you need to make a quick decision, and due to the pressure, he told them, bring me the burnt offering, bring me the sacrifice so that I can make, the in other words, I'm about to do something that I shouldn't be doing. And I am allowing the critical situation and the pressure to make me do something that I should not be doing. And for somebody that's listening to me, I have been in that point that um, it looked critical and the pressure of that thing making you feel like you need to respond right now. Simmer down now. And I call this one, sit down. And as soon, please listen to this. As soon as he made the sacrifice, as soon 
as he did what he should not have done as soon as he gave in to the critical situation, as soon as he gave in to the pressure um, and offered up the sacrifice, guess who showed up? Got dog. Samuel shows up and Samuel asks one question. What have you done? And for somebody under the sound of my voice, you are making a decision because it looks critical and because of the pressure that is being applied. And there are three things I want to give you that will make you make um, a rush decision out of your flesh. All right. And it's the three things when you get a chance, I want you to read them. And it's Sammy. It's um, it's Saul's response. When you get a chance, it's in two verses. Verses 11, that's in 1 Samuel 13. Come on here. Verses 11 and verse 12. Are you ready? When, Saul, when Samuel asks, what have you done? He says, this first thing he says, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time, when I saw, that the men were scattering and that you, Samuel, did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling themselves. First, when I saw that, then he said, I thought. Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal and I have not sought the Lord's favor. And the third thing he says, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. First, I saw. Then I thought, and then I felt. Those are the three things that get us in trouble. I saw, I thought, and then I felt. How many of us have made a rush move based on what we saw, we thought, or we felt? If you're going to be honest, come on, say me. Me, 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 me. I have made, oh my God, some rush decisions based on what I saw, I thought, and I felt. Whoever you are that is about to make a major decision based on what you see, based on what you think and based on what you feel. It ain't God. I need you to hear me. You got to hear me because it's too much at stake. This is one of the causes of him to lose his kingdom. And some of you all, this is a test of your faith. And faith goes contrary to what you see what you think and what you feel. You better hear me today. I'm begging you, regardless of what you see, he is gonna come through for you. If you maintain your position and not give in to the pressure of what you see. This is what Jesus says, if your eyes offend you, don't go and pluck it out. He don't mean reach in there and just snatch your eyeball up. You need to begin to see things in the spirit. For somebody under the sound of my voice, you are seeing some things, and I get it. It looks bad. But you are, we are a faith people. Do you hear me? Not based on what you see. What you see is contrary to what God going to do for you. He said, so when I saw, then he said, I thought. Come on, let's talk for a minute. How many of us know that when our mind get to running and we get to thinking, and we have this personal conversation with ourselves. We can talk ourselves into some stupid stuff based on what, what I thought or what I think. Come on here, y'all. We are all guilty of thinking, of thinking, of thinking, and then making a rush decision. Do you know how many people thought that drunk jumped up and got married because they thought or felt that they were getting too old? And you married a fool? <laughs> Come on here, let's talk. He said, I saw, I thought, I thought. His, he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. 
Come on. So gather your thoughts together. Get that Bible open and find your situation in the scripture. And then he says one thing, and this is key to me. First he said, I saw. Then he said, I thought. And this is the one that messed me up. I felt. If you don't get your emotions together over how you feel, because feelings, feelings, because let's talk feelings. Let's, you know, your feelings can be all over the place. You know, some days you can get up and you can feel like you ain't saved. Salvation ain't based on no feeling. You can get up one day and you can just feel like you sad. If you go, you mean to tell me you're going to base your whole day on a feeling? Stop that. Get control of your emotions and your feelings. And when you feel a certain way, that's the time that you need to hit your face and fall on your face and go in prayer. So let me give you this. So I had a situation. I want you to listen to this. That we had a guy working for us when we were trying to get the land that we were going to build. And there was a piece of property that they were trying to get me to pay thousands of dollars more than what the property was for. And the guy that worked for me came up, Pastor Hannah, Pastor Hannah, we got to make a decision now. They say somebody else got a contract on it. I said, calm down, bro. Don't come here with all that. Do not let people to apply pressure to you when you wait on God. I did not move and spend thousands of dollars because he saw, thought, or felt you're not going to bring that in here. And I did not race. I did not rush into a decision. And that decision that I didn't rush into, I need you to hear me, saved me close to a hundred thousand dollars. Do you hear me? It saved me close to a hundred thousand dollars. So whoever you are, that the Lord had me to come on this periscope and say to you, get control of what you see, get control of what you think, and get control of what you feel, and stand still. And see the salvation of God. God's going to come through for you. Let me give you this one scripture and I'm done. Because I got Bible study tonight. Ecclesiastes 10 and 4. Somebody put that on the screen. Ecclesiastes 10 and 4. Listen to this scripture. This scripture. Mess me up. Mess me up. Listen to this one. Ready? Did somebody put it on the screen yet? Ecclesiastes 10 and 4. Nope. Somebody wrote the wrong scripture. 10 and 4, not 3 or 4. Listen, church. <laughs> Listen to this scripture. If a ruler's anger rises against you, do not leave your post. Shut up talking to me. If a ruler's anger rises against you, please listen, do not leave your post. So the question is, what's your position? What's your position? Either you're going to pray, you're going to worship, you're going to stand still and seek the salvation of God, or you're going to put your hands in it. Listen, to, let me finish scripture. Calmness can lay great errors to rest. Your calmness can shut some stuff down. So I am begging somebody that's listening to me tonight, don't you rush into no decision. Don't you rush to quit your job. Don't you rush to get in debt. Don't you rush to get married. Don't you rush to leave your church. Don't you rush to make a decision that can affect your kingdom. Sit your behind down. <laughs> I said sit down. Get somewhere and sit down and hold your position. Don't make somebody think that if you don't do it now, you ain't going to get it. What God has for you, I promise you, you're going to get it. I love you guys. I had to give you all that word. All right? So control what you see, control what you think, and control how you feel. And get somewhere and sit down because God got you. All right? If I bless you today, what that mean? Hit them hearts. And I want you to say this. If you know I'm talking to you, if you know I'm talking to you, I just need you to type this one thing. I need you. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna quote that scripture. If a ruler anger rises against you, do not leave your post. I need you to say, I'm on my post. That's it. I'm on my post. Come on, let's respond. Hit that. I'm on my post. I'm on my post. There you go. Calm down. If that house is yours, if somebody else bid on it, God won't let their contract go through. You hear me? If that, if that job is yours, they might try to give it to somebody else. That thing going to come back and it's going to come back to you. And they might have an increase. 
because you was going to set up for a less salary. Come on here. I'm on my post. I am on my post. And you must control what you see, what you think, and how you feel. Stay on your post. Maintain your position. I am a worshiper. And I have learned that before I make any decision, there are two things that I'm going to do. I'm going to pray and I'm going to worship. You better hear me. I'm going to pray and I'm going to go up in the spirit and worship. And many times in my prayer and in my worship, he tell me what to do. And most of the time is get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> All right, guys, pray for me. What's out is we got Bible study tonight right there on Holman. Tomorrow I'll be in Detroit and I'll be preaching for Bishop um, Murphy's prayer conference in Detroit. Come back, do my Bible study on Thursday, then fly to Atlanta on Friday and do Bishop Pastor William Murphy's 10-year anniversary. And then I have prayer with my men on Saturday. Y'all better pray for me this week. It's a running week. But nevertheless, God got us. I love y'all. What that mean? Hit them hearts. Stop playing with me and share this thing with somebody. I helped somebody today because you was about to do something stupid. Get someone.